Okay, we have version 6.5 released, so we're going to go over some of the new features we've added. There are a number of them. So for the first one, we've added to the abilities of reoccurring. So go to General Ledger, go to Reoccurring Entries, your list will be here. And now you can hit New, and then you can browse for the source. And if I sort however I want to find a particular source I want, I can search for a certain journal source number or anything within the GL, the same way we have our transaction search. But if this is the one I want to recur, I simply select it, or I can hit View to look at the journal entry as to what the entry was as well. Once I've selected it and put it onto the list, I can edit the start and ending date, of course, and set the active and reference and all that as well. Uh, when I've saved it, we do also have the capability of going into it and editing starting and ending dates and things like that as well. Okay, we next feature is an inventory. If we go there, we can now build the components for a bill of materials or a kitted item. So we'll just look at an existing one. So an FCB 250. If we open it up and we go to the tab called components, you'll see that we've got all the list, all the items that are in it listed here. So. I've got uh, the item, I can you know, add, insert, delete, so if I want to modify this now I can insert a, another part number underneath here or to it, so I pick another item that goes into it, put in my quantity, and we've got sub-assemblies here so I can add in in between in the sub-assembly, so I don't have to go to back to the sub-assembly itself to do this, I can do it right from here. And then we do show you on the list of how many of this items, this particular item is on stock. Of course, you can see it all down here. Now, based on quantity of, of uh, whatever quantity you put up in here, because this is the, the suggested quantity it's telling us up here is what it suggests we build at this point, uh, based on uh, filling of uh, our needs for customers and for open orders and things like that. Then I can put a quantity up here. If I put in, in it'll, you can see that for 10, I'm short of three different part numbers. We take it down to one, I'm still short those items. But as I increase that quantity, you'll see that more and more items turn red so that, you know, at this point, the only thing I've got stock on is the last item. And actually, I don't even have those probably because it's uh, set at zero. But it gives you kind of a visual trial build on here so you don't have to uh, first do a trial build before you receive them. But if you put that on here, and if everything's red, uh, sorry, green, then you can go ahead, ahead and hit the build button. Now, of course, if you have the system sets, you're allowed to draw components into the negative. It'll still allow you to build it. Uh, but before you do so, you want to hit the save for any changes, and then you just simply hit the build button, and that puts the item into stock, whatever quantity you want to put on there. Hit the build, and just like our production order system, it actually uh, builds it and puts it into the uh, the, as into his purchase history so you know exactly how you built it even way back then. So no longer do you only or do you have to have your uh, our production order system to do this. You can do this right from uh, our uh, bill of materials but of course you don't get to save a, a bill of materials for future building and committing components or uh, things like that. And at the end of this we get a report to show exactly what we built. That way uh, you can you can uh, keep track of each build as it's done. Okay, the next item, if we go into Edit Inventory, and we'll go into, say, a CD204. Uh, that's in a different warehouse. Let's pick, uh, no, that's the right warehouse. Okay, we'll go into that. And if we go to the Purchase Order section, this shows... Uh, all the open POs that, that are in the system now. Let's make that a little wider. And what you see is the quantity on here. So each line shows you exactly the quantity that's on each purchase order. So that way you're seeing um, in one screen without having to go into it and drilling into the actual purchase order. So you can, uh, with, saves a lot of time uh, not having to to uh, move through all that. And then additionally, if you go to the purchase order module and you open up a PO, we always had the purchase 
uh, history section, but we've now also got details in here, so you can look at every detail of every line whenever those items were purchased, instead of having to drill down to each purchase order. Okay, the next one is in inventory again. And we, as you know, we have a group edit. So if I wanted to edit a group of items all at the same time, and we click the edit button, these fields, all these fields, you can change. And when I change it on the one item, they'll all change together. And we added two more to that. One is the weight of the item for the, for the selling unit of measure, or the stocking unit of measure, and the extended description. So you can do those both on a group edit now as well. Okay, now on to vendor. If we uh, go in there and pick a vendor, and we go on to the billing section, we now have the tab whether or the button whether to uh, print checks for this vendor or not. And in addition to that, we've got the remit to. So if you use a, if you use a remit to, then you can add a new address. Now, all you do for that is go into here and hit plus, and then put that'll put the remit to address in put the name and the address where it's going to and then when you go to the billing section you can turn on the remit to so that way the check prints to them instead. Okay, uh, a couple of small things I'll just describe. So we've got uh, the communications records in the customer's inventory vendors. In the past you would put a, a communication record into it. You would have to save the communication record and then save the customer record afterwards whereas now it'll save it uh, whether you remember to save the communication or not. When you save the customer, it'll actually save the communication record. All right, and then uh, in purchase orders, if we have a PO, let's just quickly create a new one here, and we'll put a serialized item on the order. And we'll just issue this, and I'll just put two of them on there, and issue the purchase order. No, I won't print it. And I'm going to find that PO I just created. Okay, we'll go into the purchase order. And we'll put the received quantity here of two. And it pops up and asks us for the serial number. So I'll put the first one on, the second one on, and then click OK. And then you see the serial number is down here, just like we do in our sales module. You can now, during the receiving and anytime looking on the PO, see those serial numbers. Okay, on the company settings now, if we go into edit. Company setup, and under the company in here, we've got tax info. So all the tax license numbers, business numbers, employee identification, all that is is uh, in this in our company setup now. Okay, and for those users that needed to know how product was shipped after the fact, on a quick and easy way of doing it, you go into sales history, and on the sales history left list now we have the ship. Well, that's a ship two. We want the ship via which is here. So we just added a column here so you can find your ship via quickly and easily. Okay, on the jobs, on job costing, when you edit the job, we show the, uh, or on the list here, we show the job description as well as just a job. And then when you edit the job, each of the, in the details section, we show all the information for the uh, active job as well. So just get a bit more information to see it. And here, um, instead of just having the number like we had before, we're showing the job name and the job code. And then the other one we added was a plus button just to simply add another job here. So if it's number 600 and I'll give it a name, new section, and save it. Another small but to some people significant feature if you going to email something and you go to print it and choose uh, yeah, pick ticket and email and I choose my email person and put my subject and information in here when I hit send mail after it's been sent it pops up this information to show you who it's been sent to, who uh, who was BCC, the subject, the attachment name, and the and the most important, the fact that that it was an error. So in this case, it says an error establishing connection. Please check your internet connection, your SMTP server setting, 
and try again. So instead of just erroring that we couldn't send the email, you have a very good explanation as to why. And then we added a copy to clipboard for here because in, if it's only one email that you sent, so uh, it's not too bad, but if you'd group selected a whole bunch of orders to email, you could copy all of that information for any of the errors to clipboard and that way uh, you can paste it elsewhere to work on later. Okay, and uh, we have two more features which have separate videos. Uh, one is our payroll module, and, uh, and it's, it's, there's a video that shows the functionality of it. You can look for that on our, on our uh, page. And in addition to that, some new features in Production Manager, one being our templating system and our line-by-line -line commit capabilities for doing uh, long-run jobs that last a long time. You don't want to commit inventory uh, all on day one, you only want to commit it as you add it to production. So again, watch those videos separately.